Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Eddie Johnson here. We back again. Um, yeah, let's let's get into it. So, you know, this episode is actually I, th- I think this is gonna be a series. Um, kind of like how there's a war going on outside. It was like part one and part two. This is gonna be the same thing, but this one is we're gonna call this one Parenthood. First of all, shout out to all the parents. The new parents, the old parents, the soon-to-be parents. Shout out to PJ and Tiff. Getting ready to welcome their new bundle of joy very, very soon. So shout out to them. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, parenthood, parenthood. So I'm a new parent myself, for those of you who haven't been tuned in um, recently. But yeah, I'm a new parent. And there's a lot of things that I have learned along the way. Uh, I think that just just having the parents that I've had and being a man now and understanding why they did the things that they did, it, it has enabled me to, you know, learn how to be a good parent as well. And then more importantly, um, I remember praying, uh, being a parent and praying and asking God for, you know, to see to see my kids as he sees me. Um, you know what I mean? And I think that being a parent and understanding, under, really, well, yeah, okay. At first, you have to understand, in order to understand who God is and you know, maybe why he does the things that he does, I mean, sometimes you just don't know. You just have to go along with it because you know it's for the best. But in order to really understand the heart of God, <clears throat> you have to understand the heart of a parent. And really, God's heart is that, is the heart of a parent. You know, he's... He's given people that heart of a parent. You know, he he originates, right? He he made all things. And so, um, you know, I think just understanding parenthood and just from an earthly standpoint, it it it, al- it allows you to understand who God is and his his love for us really is what I'm trying to say. Um I want to I want to go into scripture, you know, like I normally do. But then also, um, I think that I will give a few personal examples and experiences uh, on, on my understanding and learning what parenthood is and, and what it really means, right? Uh, so, yeah, so let's get into it, man. So we're going to start off in Isaiah chapter 54. We're going to read um, the first few verses, first few verses. So Isaiah 54 Uh, Verse 1. So the title is Jerusalem's Future. So just to give you a little bit of background before I start reading. So Israel was barren at this time because of their betrayal towards God. And barren meaning they don't have any children. They're not able to reproduce, right? And really Israel is basically saying the people of God, right? So what happened was at this point in time... They had betrayed God or they had uh, went off and began worshiping idols. They didn't keep uh, the commands that God had given them and they went off and did their own thing. So with any any child that strays from their parents instruction, they always have to reap that. um, How you say it? They end up reaping whatever the consequences are. And nine times out of ten, they are in good consequences. You know, they're they're bad. And so this is kind of what is going on uh, at this time. So let's start off. Isaiah 54, verse uh, 1. It says, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. So there's more people in disobedience. There's more of the enemy's children, if, if you will. Then there are those that obey the Lord, and and that there are then there are uh, of the Lord's people, right? Uh, and that's really because sin has crept the world, crept into the world, you know, at the beginning of time, and you know, now we more. I feel like now more than ever we're really starting to understand and see how evil the world truly is, right? And that's only because of the enemy. That's only because of Satan, right? So uh, back to this is verse two. It says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. 
For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt remember that the reproach of thy widowhood any more, and shalt not remember the pro reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So basically, uh, Israel, they uh, um, experienced destruction because of their betrayal uh, towards God. You know, they didn't listen to the Lord, so they had to receive the, their, their judgment for their disobedience. But uh, it's, so, it's saying here that they'll, they will remember... Um, the, it says, uh, yeah, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. So the Lord is basically saying, you know, I'm going to, you know, t bring you back to myself. Um, I'm going to wash you clean. You're not going to remember, uh, you know, your past mistakes and your past faults because I'm going to clean you up. Basically showing God's uh, grace and mercy and his forgiveness, right? And um, that's what a parent does, right? So... A parent disciplines, you know, a parent allows for their child to be disciplined. Um, but that discipline shows that love that the parent has for their children. And so sometimes we have to we have to experience the, the that discipline and that judgment and because it's meant to make us stronger, especially if we have the right perspective after we have gone through that, that discipline. You know, once you know, okay, yeah, I did this wrong, mom, you know, let me know, or dad let me know that it was wrong and I had to, you know, I had to pay for it, but I know not to do it again. And here are the, here are the reasons why. And, you know, they tell you why, right? So this is really what it is here. This is the same concept here. Um, so they experienced that discipline that God gave, um, but he, he, he loved them. So he's like, I'm going to clean you up and you're not going to remember your shame anymore. You're going to, uh, you know, you're going to there, there's going to be children of, you know, in the desolate places that are going to be brought into Israel. You know, those those desolate cities are going to be made Israel because so that is said that the tent was enlarging. So Israel would soon grow and expand and have more than what they had previously when they were uh, experiencing that discipline and that judgment. Right. So in verse five, um, it said. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and, the, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. So when you think of a husband, when it comes to scripture, you know, um, the Bible says, For husbands to love your wives as Christ loved the church, um, and gave himself up for it. So when you think of Christ's love, like how he died for us all, but yet, especially in scripture, these people still forsook him and still betrayed and still turned their backs on the Lord. But yet he still loved them and he's still saying, come, come back, come back. I think of the prodigal son in that situation, how um, the son went off and wanted to do his own thing apart from his father and his father's rule and instruction. He wasted his living. He recognized and he was basically homeless and poor. And he recognized how great he had it back home with his father and he said, you know, what? I just want to come back and be a servant. I don't even deserve to be called the son. I want to come back. But his father welcomed him back with open, open arms, had a feast for him and everything like that. So th that's kind of what this is right here. You know, that's the love of a husband. That's the love of a parent. No matter how uh, wayward a child goes or how wayward a wife may go or a spouse may go, that love of a husband is always going to welcome them back in with open arms, you know, especially the love of God, you know, because clearly we just read, for thy maker is thine husband. And that's the strong love of a, of a husband and also the strong love of a parent. You know, we're talking about parenthood. So that's what parents do. They forgive uh, no matter how many times you mess up, you know, they may be a little bit harder on you, but they still forgive you and they still love you. And that's the love of Christ. That's the love of God that he has for us. Right. So, you know, I took some notes here. The love of a husband and the love of a father or a parent is is one that loves through thick and thin. That is God's heart toward us and that of a husband, you know, that of a parent. He loves us even when we go astray, even when we're unfaithful to him. He's always faithful and he always wants us to come back. He wants, you know, he, he desires us, you know, and that's when we have to understand, like, man, you know, I've done all these 
terrible things, um, but God still forgives me. You know what I mean? And I think that goes into play when it comes to others and on, on a on a personal level when you're dealing with other people. Um, who are we to hold grudges against others when they do wrong by us or when they mistreat us or whatever? When God, when we have totally disregarded God's words and we've gone against him time and time again, but yet he still forgives us. So we have to have Essentially, we have to have a heart of a parent towards other people, especially for those of us that are believers in Christ. We really have to display that, you know, because if I am professing to be a believer, and I've said this before, if I'm professing to be a believer, but I can't forgive and I can't give the same grace that was given me, why would anyone want to listen to what I have to say? Why would anyone want to listen to me testify to the kingdom when my actions don't even show that I believe and what I'm saying, you know, so we have to really understand that. Okay. Um, and, um, so yeah, so let's, let's, um, let's move on to, uh, another scripture. Uh, this is first Kings chapter three, right? So again, we're talking about the heart of a parent and, and what that means. So I said first Kings chapter three, verse nine, first Kings. Chapter three, verse nine. Okay, so this is about um, this particular scripture about Solomon and his his wisdom um, that he received from the Lord, and it also we also gonna go a little bit deeper into a, another story, right? Uh, in in this passage, so chapter three, verse nine of First Kings, it says, "Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart." To judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who was able to judge this? So this, thy so great a people. Um, so Solomon asked for wisdom, and God granted him that. You know, he's uh, basically said, you know, you didn't ask for riches, you didn't ask for your enemy's head or anything like that. You asked for wisdom, so I will give you that more than there's any been, that more than there has ever been now or to come later on. You know, so Solomon was a very wise man, a very wise king. Um, so let's go um, into a, 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 a kind of a, a picture of how Solomon was, right? And this is um, in, in this particular in this in this particular story, uh, Solomon's heart is on display, um, and this is the heart that we need, right? Um, so it's a heart of wisdom and a heart of understanding, which most or which parents are supposed to display when it comes to their children. Um, and this is the heart that, that God has originated. This is the heart that God has given, uh, that, that God gives once we really subscribe to his word and to the truth. This is the wisdom that we receive from the Lord. So let's go into verse 16. I'm going to read from there. So it says, Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was, a, there was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night, because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight, and took my son from beside me. While thine handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is the dead, is the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king, and the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son, and she said, O oh my lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine or nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. 
That's beautiful, man. Because and the reason why I say it's beautiful because. Uh, again, it, it shows the heart of a parent, both from King Solomon in making that decision on how to bring about the truth and also from the woman who this child actually was, where she was willing to just give the child up to someone else uh, instead of having the child killed. You know, the, the, what, what King Solomon said, oh, OK, let's just cut it in half and give one to the other, one half to, the, uh, to one and one half to the other. And that's the heart of a parent, too. Uh, the heart of a parent is one of sacrifice. OK. Um, when, you know, parents, you know, and, and I, I say this from experience, you know, experiencing my parents, um, you know, and how they have been with me. You know, I know my dad and I talk a lot about my dad. I hold my dad in very high regard. You know, that's someone that. Uh, I have great respect for, great love and ad admiration for, just because of the man that he is, you know, um, and what he's done for me, what he's done for me, and again, just being who he is, and I know my dad will work late nights, he still does work late nights, <laughs> and he'll work late, and then, you know, I was playing sports at the time, and he just had access to to the to a gym, but I couldn't go until, until he was with me. So he would come home late, you know, I know he was tired, dead tired, you know, and probably wanted to just chill out, relax, watch some TV, watch some basketball, whatever. But he understood that, you know, his son had dreams and wanted to, to do certain things. And he came out with me and work out with me, really put me through the workout and, and be my rebounder and just do all these different things. And... Um, you know, looking back on it, you know, I guess when you're in it, as, especially as a kid, you don't appreciate those things. Um, you know, the things that your parents do, the many sacrifices that your parents make. You know, my mom coming home from her late nights from work and cooking when not, you know, knowing good and well, she didn't feel like it, but still cooking and providing for her family, you know. And um, those are the things that parents do. You know, parents do a lot of things that they don't really want to do, but they do it just to make sure that their child is well and happy and all of those things. And that's exactly the heart that you see here that this woman displayed. And even more so, this is the heart of the father. This is the heart of God because he gave up his own son for us. You understand? And that's an, that's important, you know, a, a selfless heart, um, a, a I was going to say carefree, but that's not the word. But having a selfless heart and, um, you know, a heart of uh, sacrifice, a heart of protection, a heart of care, you know, that's something that we need. You know, and again, King Solomon displayed that as well by having, you know, he sought wisdom from the Lord to, un to judge what was right and what was wrong. That's the heart of a parent as well. Um, we, we're here to protect our children. And so we have to know what is right and what is wrong and lay down that discipline for them so that they can be well off, you know, so that they can grow. Um, I don't know if I said it earlier, but I think of scripture uh, in Proverbs where it says, um, you know, he that, uh, dis the, he that spares the rod hates his child. And that's going back to uh, what we spoke about in Isaiah previously about how the Lord allowed, for, well, you know, he disciplined his people so that they could get, get back on the right track. And that's what parents are supposed to do. You know, we can't, we want to be friendly, but we can't be friends to our children because then that respect is, is that line of respect is very blurry. Um, you know, but when we discipline our children and, you know, and I know my wife does it, I do it to our son, um, he doesn't like it, but it's good for him. And when he when he becomes an adult, he'll understand and be like, yeah, that was all good for me. You know, I, that happened to me. The many times that I've been disciplined and then I look back on it now as a, as a man, I'm like, I'm so glad that my parents did that for me because looking at others that I know that I grew up with, they didn't necessarily have that. Um, that discipline from their parents, their parents may have been more, more so friends to them, uh, maybe to, um, make up for other things that they, that the, that these kids may not have had, but that, that doesn't benefit you in the long run. And so that's why, and then you see a lot of times that they end up growing up to be, you know, all wild and crazy. And again, the scripture says he that spares the rod hates his child. And that is a form of dislike when you just want your kid to have whatever, you don't care about what they, you know, you don't care about 
disciplining them because it only hurts them in the long run. And it hurts you in the long run because you have to see your wayward, wayward child grow up and, and do all these crazy things that you ha- had control of, but you didn't take the necessary steps to make sure that everything was in place and in order the way that it should have been. So those are the things we have to take into account. You know, we need to have that heart of um, that heart of, of a parent and knowing good from evil, discerning good from evil. Um, that's what parents do. That's what adults and mature people do. There's no good from evil, right? So, um, you know, and then this is uh, this is the last one um, that I, you know, and also this is, I do I do want to make mention of one last scripture before my last one. So this is First Kings chapter four, verse twenty nine. Um, let's go there. So verse twenty nine. It says, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand is uh, on the seashore. Um, and that's that's something that we need. That we we need a, a parent has a large heart, uh, a large heart able to contain and to hold in the wisdom that the Lord uh, gives and able to make decisions, whether they be hard decisions that are for the betterment of every one of their children and themselves too at the end of the day that's what a parent has a parent has a large heart a parent can't be you know one way you know one way more than the other it has to be balanced you know and in order to have that balance you have to have a a a heart that is able to uh, give what what is needed at the proper time Uh, give kisses and and give sweets or give the rod and give correction. You know, they have to be hand in hand with one another because you can't, you know, I think, I feel like with children, if you don't display balance, then they may be, they, they will be off balance as they grow up. They'll think maybe things are, are too funny and they won't take uh, life too serious or they'll take life a little bit too serious and not have enough fun. You know, balance is essential when it comes to uh, rearing your children, but you always have to, Give discipline because that's what you learn from. You learn from your mistakes and parents are there to point out your mistakes, but help you to come to a solution and correct your mistakes. Right. So this is the last one I want to get into. Um, This is uh, Jonah chapter four, verse six to 11. And this is this is special right here. This is really, really uh, heavy. Um, I'm sure a lot of a lot of you may know the story of Jonah where God told him to, um, you know, go to the people of Nineveh and really speak about the kingdom and, um, you know, really preach the gospel, right? Um, Nineveh was a very, uh, you, you could say they were a wicked, a wicked city, so it was a wicked place. There's a lot of sin going on. And, um, you know, God wanted them to be corrected because clearly, we can we know that God is compassionate and loving and he wants us all to come to the knowledge of the truth because he wants us to be saved. You know, um, scripture says, and I'm paraphrasing, that he doesn't want anyone, you know, he wants all to all to come to repentance. Right. For none to perish, but all to come to repentance. Right. And so God, you know, and God's the same always. He's always been the same. He's never changed. And that's the pertaining to today where. Uh, he wants all, us all to come to the knowledge of the truth. Even the most evil people, um, it's safe to say that God wants them to know the truth so that they can be saved, right? And, you know, obviously they need to repent, but he wants them to be saved. So um, that's what was going on with Jonah. Um, God told him to go over there, but he didn't want to because he felt that they were wicked. So he went his own way. He hopped on a boat, he was shipwrecked, he was swallowed by the fish. And, you know, we know that story, right? So... Here it is um, after the fact, right? After Jonah got out of the fish and all that. So this is Jonah chapter 4, verse 6. It says, And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. Um, so Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. But God prepared a worm when the, when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Uh, And you have to think he's shipwrecked and all that stuff. And now he's out here in the middle of nowhere, um, seemingly in the heat. And, you know, he wanted he, he he needed he needed something. right? He needed something to cover him. So God gave him that. God gave him. 
uh, I get what I guess it's like a canopy type of thing, something to cover you from, you know, the sun and, and the heat and everything. And God gave that to him. Right. So this is what happened. So then God prepared a, a, um, a worm to eat to basically destroy that gourd. And now it's going the next day it was gone. Right. So God is trying to teach Jonah a lesson and teach him uh, the correct heart, the heart of a parent. Right. So here it is. This is uh, verse nine. It says, and God said to Jonah, doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. So he said he's, he feels that he is uh, justified to be upset even to the point where he doesn't even want to live anymore. So it says in chapter in verse 10, then said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the gourd for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? And so, that's that's a that's a an excellent lesson, right? So Jonah here he is upset because the gourd went away, upset into unto death is what it says, um, where he didn't do anything for that. He didn't plant it. He didn't make it grow or anything like that. But he's upset. Uh, because it's not there anymore but here is here god is saying so now you're upset for that where you didn't do anything for it but it's but it came here to you and, and provided you what you needed and why am i to not be that way for these people these people that i made you know for them to hear the word like why why are you allowed to be upset for that but here i am i'm telling you to go and preach to these people because they need to hear the truth that what that will save them because they have no idea they can't discern between right and wrong and why and you know you know you, you hear you hear what i'm saying you know um you know why why is it that you're upset here and now i can't be upset because you don't want to go and do what i asked you to do to save these people when i made them you didn't make this but i made them i made all things you know and so that's um that's really God teaching Jonah the heart of a parent right there, um, to have that that heart of compassion and to be slow to anger. You know, um, yeah, these people may have done some horrible things, but God is still gracious and merciful, and we need to display that as well. We need to offer that same grace and mercy that God has given us. You know, um, so this in in this particular instance, uh, God is teaching and training him to help him understand his own heart to understand God's heart, which is that heart of a father, that heart of a parent that is concerned for uh, their children to know truth, to be saved and set free. And, you know, this is the heart of compassion that we need. Um, you know, as, as believers in Christ, uh, we have to have that love and show that love to others um, so that they can come to the knowledge of the truth. Um, you know, you think of, you know, family disputes and um, many different things that take place in our lives, uh, you know, in probably everyone's life where um, they get into disagreements uh, with family, with friends, or even with strangers and are quick to write people off and quick to, you know, just hold grudges and everything like that. When as a believer in Christ, we can't hold, hold grudges. Um, you know, we have to show that, that heart of compassion that the Lord has given us. Um, it's a hard thing too. It's a very hard thing, and I told a story here before um, about how um, I had a family member say something to me that uh, was terrible, and I didn't like it for a long time, and I really held that against them for a long time until I don't know until something just happened. Maybe I, I realized. Um, how rough of a life he had and his upbringing wasn't the easiest. It wasn't easy at all. And here I am holding a, a grudge against him, holding something against him, when, in fact, I need to be displaying that love of Christ to him even more. And understanding that, and I think I mentioned this before in the There's a War Going On Outside series, um, that the spirits are at work, are always at work, right? Um, there's God's spirit and then you know the Holy Spirit and then there's Satan's spirits and um, you know Satan will use people to do his bidding even maybe again maybe without their their knowledge of it and so when people come out and say crazy things and do crazy things we can't always hold it against that person whereas we need to understand okay 
the enemy is, is trying to use this person to get to me and make me act away. And now the enemy will be using me because I allow for this person to get to me and get me off of, you know, get me away from what I know is right and what I know and how I know I'm supposed to act. Um, that's hard, man. And I, I feel like that comes down to maturity. Um, that comes down to, um, you know, having rather than having milk having spiritual meat, you know, spiritual milk, rather than, you know, taking that in and, and being nourished from that, there's a, there comes a point in time where we have to graduate to mature. We have to graduate to solid food. You know, like babies, they drink milk and drink formula. Um, we have to graduate to a solid food. We have to, we have to, we're going to become an adult one day. You know, as, as babies, they grow up to be adults someday. That's the same thing. Uh, when it comes to our walk of faith and just being an adult, period. There's some adults that are still stuck in youth and in childhood with, you know, the, the, their mentality where they hold grudges and, you know, they uh, it's a tit for tat type of thing. And, you know, they want to repay people for what they've done or they're happy when people are down bad and, and when bad things happen to them because of what they may have done to them or because of whatever type of insecurity they may have within themselves. Um, I think it takes a mature person to be able to snap out of that quickly. You know, that's not to say, I was talking to my wife about this yesterday. You know, the Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times, but he stands up again. And um, we're always going to, you know, unfortunately, we're going to trip up on ourselves and we're going to come short. But we have to um, know how to rally ourselves back, you know, and get back to the word. Like, okay, um, you know. And, you know, let me tell actually a, a story. Um, so, you know, my wife and I, uh, she did something to upset me or said something to upset me. <laughs> and I was just holding on to that. I'm like, all right, bet. You know, she want to act like that? Okay, cool. I'm going to do this next thing. And then every morning, you know, I can't start my day without reading scripture. And so this day I, I decided to read, um, I think it was... Colossians, either Colossians chapter three or chapter four, I can't remember. And um, this one really, you know, I know the Lord was was absolutely dealing with me and with this scripture. It was so timely, and it said, "Husbands, do not be bitter toward your wives." And I'm like, okay, man, I, <laughs> I had to take a deep breath. Excuse me, I had to take a deep breath, and I'm like, all right, God, I, I can't, you know, you got me right there, you know. It would be absolutely wrong for me to be like, nah, nah, but she did this and I'm going to hold on to it and whatever, you know, I'm going to treat her the same way. But, you you know, holding bitterness to your wife, you know, then your home is off balance when you bring that stuff, you know, when when you let it fester and when you let it just sit and marinate rather than uh, talking about it and ironing it ironing it out and coming to a solution and, and really coming to some f- type of forgiveness and come to find out, you know, what happened, it wasn't even really that serious for me to be so upset over. You know, I guess, you know, sometimes things just happen, you know, with all the other things we have going on in life, one thing could just take you over the edge and now you're taking everything out on this one person. You're taking everything out on your spouse or, you know, whatever it is. And it, it, that's just not the right way to go about things. So, um, you know, the Lord was able to get me back and, and, and bring me back to reality. Like, yo, this is this is you. This is your other half. So, you know, you guys are one. This is you. If you're going, if you're bitter against your wife, you're bitter against yourself at the end of the day. And um, that's a deep that's deep, man. And I had to um, to really come back into that and, and understand like, yo. I got to be that husband that God is toward me and, and toward his people, you know. Um, I have to be, and I'm not saying that my wife is bad at all, you know. I am I do whack things to her, too, where she's, you know, she gets mad at me for, you know, that I've done. <laughs> but, you know, I have to, as a man, and, you know, and I'm, I try to be hard on myself because I know what's expected of me. I know what the Lord expects me to do and to say and to how to act. So I try to, you know, always 
hold the microscope over myself and, and ask the Lord, like, God, like, what did I do wrong in the situation? You know, um, help me to love my wife like you love the church. Help me to be that husband to her, you know, and being the husband to her, but also having the heart of a parent toward everybody else that I encounter, towards my family, towards those that I feel may have done me wrong, really having the heart of compassion. Now, that doesn't mean that you're supposed to be a, a doormat and be walked all over and allow people to do all these horrible things. But it means that you're supposed to have that heart of forgiveness and let people know that, you know, or, or maybe maybe you don't let people know that you forgive them. But you forgive them in your heart and you let it go. You know, you don't allow yourself to be subjected to, you know, maltreatment, but you still forgive and you still um, show that love of Christ. You know, you still show that heart of forgiveness, that heart of a parent, that large heart that, uh is able to forgive, able to show compassion, able to give that same grace and mercy that the Lord has given us, you know. Um, so, yeah, man, um, I think there's a there's a couple more notes that I just had um, and that I just want to briefly just put out there, right? So these are the last notes that I had, and then I will, I'll wrap it up. So a believer must be able to open their hearts wide like that of a parent. Right. We talk about that. The heart of a parent is one of forgiveness, of sacrifice, of, um, you know, of love, of care, uh, of compassion. You know, that's the heart of a parent. Um, so um, if I understand God's grace, I must have a large heart that can share that grace. That's just what I said. If God's given me grace, who am I to not extend that grace to someone else? So then people will see me and, and or encounter me and know, OK, this this dude is different. What is it about him? And then that is that allows for people to come to the knowledge of the truth, to come to know who God is, to know who his word is, just by how we act and how forgiving and gracious and merciful we can be. The next bullet point is the heart of a parent calls for making tough decisions like that of Solomon, um, saying, you know, we're going to cut this baby in half uh, just to come to the truth, just to get reach the truth. And it ended up happening, right? Um so the heart of a parent calls for making tough decisions, but seeing examples and uh, seeing examples in scripture and knowing how to act when making those tough decisions. So we have examples like Solomon, examples like Christ. You know, Christ showed the ultimate heart of a parent by giving up himself for us, by taking the cross for us, by sacrificing. He get, he he sacrificed his own life so that we could have life. And um, those are those are the examples that we need to learn from and adopt that into our own lives. Right. Um, when it comes to our families, our children, and even those that others that we just don't know that may be strangers, you know, we still need to have that heart of love and compassion and um, making those tough decisions. Right. Uh, so this one, the next bullet point, we need a heart of love that transcends time, borders, ethnicities, all types of things. Right. So, um, you know, racism is, is a terrible thing. And that's something that I think I don't think that will I don't think racism will ever be done away with, right? But as believers in Christ, um, that heart of love that we have, that heart of a parent, is supposed to overlook all of that. You know, um, who cares about you know? I feel like when you give when you give your time and your energy over to you know those those race wars and those race conversations and racism, all that that tends to you know push you into that realm and where you're kind of in it now, you know, but whereas when we don't see race and we don't see color, we don't see, um, you know, anything like that, the, the time and the borders, when we're able to get over that and just show that love, then, you know, we're able to make a, a true change and a true difference, especially being believers in Christ. We're able to have a bigger impact for the kingdom when we don't even care about those things, when we just act in the way that, that the Lord wants us to act, right? So um, this is the last one. The heart of the father, which is the heart of a parent, uh, had, had to be at work in order for me to receive the truth, right? God had to give me grace and mercy after all of the terrible things, after all of the sin, sinful things that I've done and that I've committed. He still had grace on me where I was able to come to the knowledge of this truth, right? Um you think of it from a human standpoint, if somebody keeps doing wrong to you, you're just going to cut them off and that's going to be it. Even if you know you have something that could really help them and change their lives and for the better, you're going to cut them off because you're like, man, you keep on poking me in the eye when I'm just trying to help you out. So forget it, man. You have to get it on your own. I'm not here for you no more. 
but God didn't do that, you know, and how, how beautiful is that? How, um, how loving and caring is that? You know, that's the true heart of a parent, no matter like, <laughs> like my daughter has scratched me up so crazy. Had me looking like Scar from Lion King, you know, scratch me up. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to, you know, when she's trying to pick up something to put in her mouth that is not supposed to go in her mouth, that don't mean I'm not going to stop her from it. That doesn't mean I'm not going to change her pamper. Or I'm not going to show her love anymore. I'm not going to do these things. I'm going to always do that, no matter how much, how many times she scratches me or <laughs> drools on me, messes up my clothes. I'm going to still give her that love, you know, because that's the heart of a parent. And even, um, you know, when, when she gets older, you know, as she when she gets the same age as her brother, you know, for him, you know, even though, you know, kids do things that may, you know, kind of grind your gears a little bit, you still show them love because they deserve that, you know, um, you know, especially being a parent, you give your kids love no matter what, you give your kids the best, you know, so whether her or her brother are doing whatever they're doing, I'm gonna still love them no matter what, you know, I'm gonna still uh, show them that love and compassion, that heart of a parent, that same heart that God has shown me, you know, throughout all these years. And so that's really the heart of a parent that we, that we have to adopt. The, we have to adopt the heart of the Lord, the heart of God. Whatever God has done to us and for us, that's how we have to be and that's how we have to live and act, right? So I, I, I spoke a lot, man. This was a, a longer episode, but I think it was crucial. I think it was timely as always, man. Um, we got to get back to love, man, the right love. Not that acceptance and tolerant love, but the right love. You know, Jesus, uh, he, he sat with sinners, but he told them not to sin anymore for their own benefit. He told them that the action that they were doing will cause them to forfeit the kingdom. And so they needed to correct themselves. They needed to repent and um, change their lives. You know, and so that's what we have to do. We have to love people the right way, love people the way that Jesus loved us, you know. So, man, yeah, I appreciate you guys for listening. Uh, This was it's always therapeutic for me, man, to get this, get these thoughts out. And I always try to go back and listen and examine myself, examine these episodes for myself so that I can improve. You know, I, I, I really I'm not I'm not just a talker. I, I try to always practice what I preach, you know, um, you know, especially if I'm saying something about the word. I got to make sure that I'm doing it, too, or I'm doing it first before I say something. Um, but, you know, I'm a work in progress as everyone is. You know, we always got to um, we always need a tune up. You know, we always need an oil change to make sure everything is running right and the, that the right things are happening in our lives. So, yeah, man, I appreciate y'all again hope you guys are blessed by this as i always am blessed by this and um yeah man i hope y'all enjoy this enjoy your weekend enjoy your week whenever you listen to this just enjoy yourself man and um come back to the lord man it's it's time for that it's definitely time for that have that heart of a parent and recognize his heart toward you and, and the grace and mercy and the love and compassion and forgiveness that he's shown you so make sure you're able to give that as well to others so yeah man Y'all be blessed. Yo, yo.